Well, let's get more on Gaza now and the situation there and speak to political analyst Jason Johnson. He is a professor of political science at, and communications at Hiram College in Ohio. He joins us live now from Boston, Massachusetts. Thanks for being with us. I want to start by getting your thoughts on the U.S. criticism Thank or you. U.S. reaction to the shelling of another U.N. school today. Uh, the U.S. described it as the disgraceful shelling of a UN school and they've again urged Israel to live up to the standards they set themselves in avoiding civilian casualties. Are you surprised at all that US, that White House and State Department officials are using this kind of language? No, but the United States has never had difficulty issuing tough talk to Israel. But none of that tough talk ever manifests itself in actual changes in the economic or military relationship between the United States and Israel. So uh, it's the same sort of chatter that we've heard from Bill Clinton, that we've heard from Barack Obama, that we've heard from George Bush. Every single president tells Israel that they need to scale back some of their behavior in dealing with the Palestinians. And no president ever seems to be willing to back up those kinds of strong statements. So what does this mean then? What is the next step? Because we know there's a little bit of friction behind the scenes in terms of John Kerry's role in trying to broker a longer term truce with the Israelis. The White House certainly wasn't too pleased with that. Does Mr. Kerry now take a step back or does he redouble efforts to try and work with the Israelis to bring an end to the conflict? He's unfortunately the best option that we have in the United States. Uh, President Obama himself is caught up in domestic issues with immigration and budgetary issues. He can't directly involve himself in the conflict. And John Kerry, despite the fact that he has been proven to be less than effective in negotiations in Syria and several different places, certainly much less effective than Hillary Clinton, he is the only option that the United States really has to negotiate any sort of ceasefire or peace between Israel and Gaza. So Unfortunately, that's what the United States and consequently the rest of the world are stuck with for the time being. But is part of the problem the fact you said that Obama can't get too directly involved? Of course, domestic concerns, particularly economic issues in the U.S., are always going to be his number one priority. But, I mean, look at the situation here. The human death toll is mounting all the time in Gaza. Uh, Kerry hasn't received you know, too much of a warm reception, shall we say, from the Israelis. They haven't been too receptive right. to his initial proposal. Does Obama need to now involve himself that much more to bolster Kerry's efforts? What it would take uh, and what would actually have a huge impact on this conflict is for the president to do something historic, uh, for the president to step up and pull back the military funding that the United States gives to Israel. Israel has no incentive to come up with truly peaceful negotiations and solutions uh, between themselves and the Palestinian Authority or, or Hamas because they know that at the end of the day the United States will continue to fund them to the tune of billions of dollars uh, for the Iron Dome, for soldiers, for, uh, for flak jackets, for military equipment. If the president really wanted to get involved, he doesn't have to fly uh, over to Geneva and engage in any sort of negotiations. All he has to do is zip up the purse strings in the United States, and that would force Israel back to the negotiation table. But no one, not President Barack Obama and no previous president of the United States, have been willing to engage in that action. But that's because the support for Israel, the, the relationship with Israel is very much an institutional thing. What you talk about is very unrealistic, isn't it? Because uh, Congress would never allow President Obama to do that, would they? Uh, they probably wouldn't, but uh, certainly we've seen over the last six years, Congress doesn't really allow President Obama to do much of anything right now. Uh, so that wouldn't be surprising. That's a continuation of a trend. Uh, but the other reason is this, and this is important to understand historically uh, about why the United States continues to maintain this relationship with Israel, despite the fact that as far as polling goes in the United States, the American public uh, has become much less happy with much of Israel's behavior and much more sympathetic to the plight of Palestinians in Gaza in particular is because it's ideological. Um, the United States now has, you know, relative control of Iraq, relative control of Afghanistan. This isn't because the U.S. wants to have a foothold in the Middle East. This is because there is a large number of religious and ideological conservatives in the United States who feel that historically the U.S. should have a protective relationship with Israel, regardless of Israel's behavior. So we're facing up against history and economic realities here, and unfortunately, people to continue to die and suffer while people in the United States dither about old policies that are no longer applicable to the world we're living in. Professor Jason Johnson, thank you. Well, three Al Jazeera journalists have now 